Welcome to this lecture about the weighted mean, also called the weighted average. Suppose that we like to calculate the mean of these four numbers. We would then simply sum the four numbers and divide by 4, which gives a mean value of 12. Note that instead of adding the values and dividing by 4, we can instead multiply each value by 1 fourth and then sum those products. Both methods will give the exact same results. Multiplying each value by 1 fourth is the same as multiplying each value by 0 0.25. Let's say that we now have five numbers. We could then multiply each value by 1 fifth or 0 0.2 and sum these products to compute the mean value. The mean of these numbers is 13. Note that the sum of the multiplication factors is always 1. Since we multiply each data point by the same factor, 0 0.2 in this example, each of the data points contributes equally to the mean value. A weighted mean, on the other hand, is a mean where some data points contribute more than others. The following multiplication factors can be seen as weights. We see that the last data point is multiplied by the weight 0 0.6, whereas the other data points are multiplied by a weight of 0 0.1. The last data point will therefore contribute much more to the mean value than the other data points. Since we put more weight on the largest value in this example, the weighted mean will be 15 which is slightly higher than the unweighted mean we calculated earlier. The formula for the weighted mean looks like this, where W denotes the weights for each of the data points. For example, the first value is multiplied by its corresponding weight, the first weight, whereas the second value is multiplied by the second weight, and so forth. Then the sum of these products is divided by the sum of the weights. When the sum of our weights is equal to 1, then the denominator is equal to 1. The formula for the weighted mean is then simplified to this, which corresponds to our previous calculations since the sum of the weights was equal to 1 in those examples. Suppose that we would multiply our weights by 2, where the weights are now twice as big as in our previous example. Then the sum of our weights is 2, which means that we need to divide by 2 to get the correct weighted mean value. Note that we will get exactly the same weighted mean value since the ratios of the weights are still the same in this example. The last weight is still six times greater than the other weights. We'll now have a look at an example where a weighted mean is used to calculate the mean score for one student in a course including two simple online quizzes and one final exam. The total score is 100 for each test. We see that the student got relatively high scores on the quizzes compared to the final exam. The unweighted mean of these three scores is about 82. However, the teacher uses a weighted average to calculate the mean score, when the score on the final exam is worth 80% of the final grade, whereas the quizzes are only worth 10% each. The weighted average of the test scores is therefore calculated to be 66.5. Note that the sum of the weights is equal to 1 in this example, which means that we do not need to divide by the sum of the weights. Although the student did very well on the quizzes, the grade will be based mainly on the final exam, since it has a much greater weight on the average score compared to the quizzes. Another example where a weighted mean is commonly used is when we like to pool mean values from different studies that are based on different sample sizes. Suppose that we know the mean values from three different studies, 
and like to pool these into one mean value. The different studies are based on different sample sizes. When we pool the means, it seems reasonable to put more weight on this mean value because it is based on a larger sample compared to the other studies. We here use the sample size for each study as a weight when we pool the means. Note that the weights do not sum up to 1 in this example, which means that we need to divide by the sum of the weights. Using the sample sizes as weights, our pooled or weighted mean is 79. Note that we can normalize the weights by first dividing each sample size by the total sample size. The weights now sum up to 1, and we can now compute the weighted mean like this. As an example why the weighted mean is appropriate to use when we pool means that are based on different sample sizes, let's consider the following five data points. The mean of these data points is 13.2. Suppose that we would calculate the mean of the first two numbers and the mean of the last three numbers. If we would calculate the mean of these two means, we would get a value of 12.75. Note that the mean of the two means is not equal to the mean that was computed based on all five values, since the second mean is based on three numbers, whereas the first mean is based on only two numbers. We should put more weight on the second mean value when we pool these two means. We'll now calculate the weighted mean of these two means. Since the first mean is based on two numbers, we use the weight 2, whereas the second mean gets the weight 3 because it is based on three numbers. Note that the weighted mean now results in exactly the same value as the mean of the original values. If we insert the calculations for the two means in the equation for the weighted mean, we see that we can cancel these numbers. This means that we will end up with the same calculations for calculating the mean of the original numbers. This explains why the weighted mean results in the exact same value as the mean of the original values. This was the end of this lecture about the weighted mean. Thanks for watching.